All right, we're going to take a closer look at the business of media and entertainment right now. Despite the global recession, the Walt Disney Company has managed to keep its theme parks filled so far this year with a series of deep discounts. The question is, how long will it have to rely on promotions to prop up attendance? Joining us with more is Bloomberg's Vera Gibbons. Vera? Hi there. Well, the booking window for Disney's current marquee offer, free dining for guests who book a five-night stay for travel from late August until October, was due to expire last weekend, but Disney just officially extended the booking window through September 26 and recently began contacting some customers with offers of free dining for travel as late as mid-December. This on the heels of another big promotion earlier in the year that offered guests a seven-night stay for the cost of four. Now, with no economic recovery in sight and the consumer still cautious, analysts say these promotional offers, which have been met with great fanfare, are critical. We've not seen what I would call a, you know, a cyclical recovery in consumer discretionary spending across our media universe generally. So I think they are necessary. But, says David Bank, as well other analysts as well, it is a double-edged sword. Now, customers come to expect the deep discounts or they later cancel trips to take advantage of promotions now. That, of course, leaves a hole in future demand. I think the risk is... Uh, you know, uh, that these discounts become something like crack cocaine, you know, that, that the, the park visitors become addicted to. And that's just one of the reasons, Matt, everyone will be listening closely for future booking patterns when Disney reports its earnings out on Thursday. Just crack at it. I knew you you'd know. like that sound bite from Disney. You can never stop them. <laughs> All right, let's uh, continue this uh, media spree here. Sumner Redstone's privately owned National Amusements Incorporated will take bids starting tomorrow for a large chunk of its U.S. and international movie theater assets. This according to the Los Angeles Times. All this aimed at slashing debt and uh, at National and ultimately keeping control of CBS and Viacom. Our Greg Miles has been reporting this story for us. Uh, Greg, is now really a good time for Sumner Redstone to be selling movie theaters? You feel like you can make a movie out of it, you know, a time to sell. And I spoke with, uh, you know, Larry Haverty, among other investors. He's at Gemco. Uh, he owns CBS and Viacom shares. He says now is a perfect time to sell uh, movie theater assets. You got uh, ticket sales just uh, doing very well, up 10 or 11 percent thus far this year. Strong movies. Uh, he estimates that in this environment, you could get seven to eight times cash flow, okay, per theater. Uh, that would be up, time, up from about six to seven times cash flow in a typical situation. So looking good for Sumner, and it ain't been looking good uh, the past few years. He is, though, under huge financial pressure, right? Uh, how bad is it? Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. Remember, National Amusements, uh, 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 it's a very high debt, and it's also the holding company for uh, the, the voting and non-voting shares, or Sumner's voting and non-voting shares, in CBS, OK, and Viacom. And the combined market value of those two companies, OK, uh, since uh, CBS and Viacom were split in 2006, has fallen by 60 percent, or by $30 billion. And it's that decline, by the way, was violated National's debt companies and forced Sumner to sell part of his uh, non-voting shares in Viacom and CBS recently. That potentially could happen again. All right, so how much money does he, is he looking to raise from this and from other asset sales, and how much could he potentially pay down the debt that well, he has? Well, you know, this is a private company, okay, number one. Uh, it's, it's, it's pointing out the estimate is that if you sold, let's say, 1,000 of the U.S. or the, the 1,000 U.S. theater screens, you get 550,000 to 600,000 per screen. Okay, you add that up for 1,000, you end up with 550, 600 million. The problem is uh, that this guy or National Amusements uh, owns uh, $1.5 billion by the end of 2010. They own a big chunk of this fall. And the big question here is, where is Sumner going to get the money? As you know, in the end, it is all about the it's money. All, it's all about the money. Right? It, that's for sure. We, we don't have to debate that. Who are the likely buyers for these assets? I mean, who does it look like can come in and swoop this stuff yeah, up? Yeah, you know, they're all tear-jerking about companies with no cash. Uh, he, uh, people point out to me there are a number of national chains, including uh, Regal Cinemas, AMC, also a company called Cinemark. They got cash, and they got access to the debt markers, uh, markets. But the problem is, though, they may uh, be able to buy, but the question is, uh, uh, how much are they going to want to buy? And Sumner's got to sell. All right. You know what I want to do? I'm going to keep talking about the movies right now, maybe from a more exciting <laughs> perspective. Uh, for, for me or for movie fans out there, guinea pigs knock out the boy wizard at the box so office this weekend. G-Force, the animated 3D Walt Disney picture about a band of hero guinea pigs, to uh, guinea pigs topped box guinea offices sorry. in the U.S. and Canada with $32.2 million in sales. Disappearing out of first place, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. The movie earned $30 million in ticket sales in its second week in theaters. And ran, rounding out the top five, The Ugly Truth, Orphan, and Ice Age, Dawn of the Dinosaurs. See any of those, Greg? Uh, I'm going to go see it.
What's, what's on the top of your list here? Uh, Transformers. Transformers uh, on the top of your list. By the way, you got to say, uh, but I've also been told by uh, the CEO of Paramount that there's going to be a Transformer 3, 4, and 5. So get ready for those. We're only on uh, number Vera, two, right? I got to get your take. I, I don't no go to movies in the weekend. summertime. No, I don't do it in the summertime. <laughs> All right. Only in the winter. Well, it is air conditioned in there. <laughs>